All right, before this video gets started, I just want to make very clear that if you have lost a loved one recently or a long time ago and you still have trouble with it, I am not making this video to demonize you. I'm not making this video to belittle uh, the bad thing that happened to your family member or any other traumatic experience that you went through. The Bible tells us that we need to mourn with our brothers and sisters when they go through hard times. So I'm making this video, I am not belittling traumatic experiences. The Bible tells us there's a time for joy and a time for mourning. So if you are mourning, that's 100% acceptable. I'm making this video to hopefully explain why, in my opinion, why bad things happen to good people. With all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in to the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Personally, I think this question is poorly worded. I think a more appropriate question is why do bad things happen? The reason I say this is because in Mark chapter 10, verse 17, it says, And as he was settling out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. So Jesus here is claiming that no one is good. So if we're going to ask the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, the, the truth of the matter is no one is good. No one is to the standard that God holds us to. And this might sound like a bad thing to you, but later on in the video, I'm going to explain to you why this is actually a good thing. But that put aside for now, Jesus says no one is good except God. So the question is, why do bad things happen? Well, if we jump all the way back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. It says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge and the good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. So the tree of knowledge, well, pretty much what it was is it gave man the ability to see like God. You could see good and evil. That's why when they first took a bite of the apple, they saw and they knew that they were naked. So them eating the apple automatically put sin into the world and it pretty much created evil. So this passage is telling us pretty much that God gave man dominion over the earth. That we are the ones, he gave earth to us so that we may walk and choose what we do on this earth. But since we ate the apple, it brought sin into the world. So not only do we have dominion over the world, but now that evil is in the world, we can become evil. And that is why bad things happen. And in the grand scheme of things, sin is what causes bad things. I would like to give some examples. Again, I just want to make this very clear. This is not to belittle people. I'm going to share these two examples with you just to give insight of our situation as to see how bad our life could be rather than what it is. And to show that just because you're quote unquote good doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to you. If you guys are familiar with the book of Job, it's about halfway through the Old Testament in the act in the Bible. Chronologically, though, Job falls into Genesis. So if you were to take the Bible chronologically, you have Genesis, Job somewhere in there, and then Genesis continues. So Job was actually alive very early on, and he was in the book of Genesis. Satan is coming to God and saying, "Hey, this is your this is your guy right here. He only praises you because you're good to him, right?" God said this. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? So God himself called Job blameless and upright. And yet he still allowed the devil to do these bad things to him. You know, he, he lost his family, he lost his house, he lost his livestock, he lost everything except his life. But Job never blamed God. He questioned God. He does question him. You can tell in the tone of his voice and the things he said. He questions God, but he never blames God. He never curses God. Why is that? Because God is good. As Jesus said, no one is good but God. See, these bad things can happen to us, but it doesn't take away the fact that God is good. And another example, Jesus. This man was perfect. I know he wasn't just man. He had this, the living God inside of him. So he was God and man. But Jesus Christ lived a perfect life sinless life yet he suffered one of the most excruciating deaths that you could ever endure he got crucified and this goes to show that just because you're good doesn't mean that god won't test you sometimes doesn't mean he won't take things from you but also give things to you it just simply means that bad things happen because sin is abundant in the world now i told you earlier that 
us not being good and only God being the good one is actually a good thing. And that's because if we could get to heaven by being good, if we had to be good in God's eyes to get to heaven, then no one would ever get to heaven. But the beauty of that is Jesus Christ is good. He is God. He lived a sinless, perfect life. And him dying on the cross paid for our goodness. You see, because now when we go to God and God said, you did this bad, you did this bad, you did this bad, you sinned here, you fell here, you did all these bad things. Now when we get to the throne room of God, we can say, yes, Lord, I did do those things. But I am good, not of my own accord, but because Jesus Christ makes me good. He makes me righteous. And God the Father accepted Jesus Christ. He accepted him as a sacrifice for all of the world. All sin. So my sin and your sin are forgiven if we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of our sins. If we see the beauty is you got to find out that us as humans are evil, we're no good, we're liars, we're thieves, we're adulterers, we're all these bad things. And through our actions, we despise God. But He was so good that He took our punishment. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our punishment. Because He was sinless. He, As He died, He said, it is finished. He took our sins and put it upon Himself. So that we may be forgiven and go into heaven. And that's the beauty of the gospel. That's the beauty of Jesus Christ. That we are not good, but He makes us good. When we go to heaven, we get a glorified body. I saw all these things. And I know if you're going through hard times you may have searched why do bad things happen you may have searched that because you want to know and yes bad things do happen but i just want to leave you with a promise of god it's found in revelation chapter 21 verse 3 through 4. just to get some context it's talking about the new heaven and the new earth this is the past like after judgment and all that stuff god creates a new heaven and a new earth and this is what he says and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. So here's the promise of God. No matter what happens to you on this earth, no matter if you know, your loved ones, close loved ones die, no matter if your house burns away no matter if you go bankrupt if you trust in god and find your purpose find yourself in jesus christ live like him accept him as lord and strive to be like him every day of your life no matter what happens to you on this earth you are promised that all that suffering all that pain it will be worth it because god will, himself will wipe your tears away there will be no mourning in heaven because god is good so why do bad things happen? It's because we are bad people. You see, we might be good people. I would say I'm I'm a better person than Adolf Hitler. But that doesn't make me good. If I compare myself to the worst people on earth, yeah, I look good. But compare yourself to Jesus Christ, and none of us look good. It's like a sheep in a green pasture. The sheep is very white. And he, you can tell that he is clean and pure. But as soon as you take that white sheep and you put him on top of freshly white snow, no longer does that sheep seem so pure and white. So don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to Jesus Christ. Because he is the one that is good. He is the one that is perfect. And he is the only way to heaven. God bless you guys. Always remember you're not alone. Jesus loves you. I love you. Have a blessed rest of your day.